know it's important to eat well, that eating the right foods could keep us fit and healthy. But exactly how healthy? Scientists are making some extraordinary discoveries about how the food we eat could actually help us. One vegetable we might have turned up our noses at as children could hold the key to one of our most feared diseases. Every day, millions of cell divisions take place in our body. But sometimes, as these new cells are faithfully reproduced, mistakes occur called mutations, which, if the body's protective agents fail to check, will grow out of control. Although our defense systems are extremely reliable, in the developed world, one in six people will succumb to cancer. The good news is that scientists have found a new substance that could halve our chances of getting cancer. And they've found the highest levels of it in some of the most commonly eaten vegetables. Eating the right food to avoid cancer is like wearing a seat belt to lower your risk of a fatal accident. You never know when you're going to have an accident, but statistics show very clearly that the wearing of seat belts has saved many lives. Professor Paul Talalay from the John Hopkins University in America is trying to find new ways to protect us against cancer. And now he may have made one of the biggest breakthroughs in a generation. The time has come in America when the same kind of concentrated effort that split the atom and took man to the moon should be turned toward conquering this dread disease. When US President Richard Nixon declared war on cancer in 1971, unprecedented energy and resources were poured into finding a cure for cancer. But despite the enormous advances in our understanding of what causes the disease, it remained one of the biggest killers in the world. So Professor Talalay decided to adopt a different approach. Instead of trying to cure cancer, try to prevent it. When we started to try to develop strategies for protecting ourselves against cancer, we were a very small group, and the idea that one could, in fact, reduce the risk of cancer was a strange idea until quite recently. All cancer arises from one single cell. The process that turns that cell malignant can take decades. So, rather than search for a cure for full-blown cancers, Talalay looked for a way to halt the process much earlier in its cycle. This is the silent period during which we simply do not know that we contain cells that are at one stage or another. And so one is really looking uh, to attack a hidden, a hidden enemy. Cancer involves a series of cumulative changes to the cell's DNA over 15 to 20 years. It is much easier to arrest or reverse this process during the early years than to fight an established tumor later. There are enzymes in our own cells that are concerned with the detoxication of cancer-causing chemicals. Talalay knew from public health studies that eating fruit and vegetables lowered the risk of cancer and that these foods contain something that increased the levels of cancer-preventing enzymes in our bodies. But which types of foods were best? A study in Germany took him a step closer. As nutrition was healthier in the West, it was expected that people there would have less cancer. But quite the opposite was true. Despite the fact that Easterners ate more fat and fewer fruits and vegetables, they had significantly fewer nutritionally related cancers. The explanation was one other difference in the diet, the larger consumption of cabbage. It was a very uh, um, interesting and uh, in some ways surprising finding that certain commonly eaten vegetables contain relatively large quantities of plant chemicals that raise these protective enzymes. So to find the richest source of these chemicals, Professor Talalay decided to test a range of vegetables, including broccoli. Any effort to isolate a compound 
from a natural source is fraught with difficulties. Our nightmare was that it might be a combination of a number of compounds, and so I think that we were favored by chance that it turned out to be a single uh, and very potent compound. And that is a sharp tasting molecule called sulfurophane. This is a molecular model of sulfurophane. It's a compound that has quite a lot of sulfur in it. Sulfurophane is a type of mustard oil that gives broccoli its distinctive flavor. It also stimulates production of crucial enzymes that neutralize cancer-causing chemicals in the body. When we isolated sulforaphane from, from broccoli, we tested it for its ability to prevent tumor formation, and there were fewer tumors per animal, the tumors were smaller, and they developed more slowly. There was also a strong correlation with dosage, more sulforaphane, less tumor. And broccoli, it seemed, was the best source of this anti-cancer chemical. But Talalay and his team didn't stop there. We sent everyone in the lab out to purchase a head of broccoli. And when we assembled these 22 heads of broccoli in our laboratory, we found that the concentration of the protective compounds that raise these enzymes varied by a factor of 10 which meant just eating broccoli wasn't the answer. There was just too much variation from plant to plant. What we need to find is a constant source of sulforaphane. And then the team made another lucky discovery. Broccoli seeds that have been grown in the presence of water and light for three or four days contain the highest concentrations of sulforaphane. When the plants first emerge from the seeds and are most vulnerable to predators, the presence of high concentrations of sulforaphane is believed to afford protection. Eating a single tablespoon of these seeds every day is the equivalent of consuming one and a half kilograms of mature broccoli a week. eats broccoli sprouts three or four times a week. They may not look very appetizing, but a handful of these seedlings could be just what you need to reduce the risk of cancer.